This is Bear With Us Podcast. Uh, can we can we add girl? I mean, we aren't all manly like you. Okay, okay. How's this? This is Bear With Us, girl. No, no, no. More like girl. Like a glitter bear. This is Bear With Us, girl. Perfect. This is Bear With Us, girl, where we stir the honey pot with hot topics, body issues, the adult industry, fashion, news, pop culture, pup culture, and more. From the bear perspective. For and by the community. I can barely stand it. Get it? You're unbearable. <laughs> That's never going to get old. That's going to be in your dreams. It's going to get worse and worse the more <laughs> as the show goes on. It's going to be like, ah. <laughs> just longer. But I was just, we were just joking about this. It's funny. Um, you know, you're like the big manly, like, muscles and hair and blah, blah, blah. And you talk about Cher, Housewives. You have like a little candy. <laughs> I told you it's oral fixation. Is it true or you'd like candy? What? I love food. That's just it. I love when fit people tell me that. It's like, no, honey, you haven't loved food. Girl. You've been with me loving food. You're like, you haven't met food yet. <laughs> At 4 a.m. Chili cheese fries. Del Taco. Oh, and I just had ta ta Taco Bell last night after the event. After I went to the Dragula event. Oh, my God. I ordered $40 worth of Uber Eats on delivery of Taco Bell, which means I ordered a taco. I was going to say, <laughs> this, like, and they want us to use Uber Eats and Postmates and all that. It is so ridiculously expensive. It's like service fee. Uh, tip fee, tire fee, mm -hmm. Del delivery napkin fee. fee. And then they're like, but since you have the, uh, the um, you pay for it every month, you have a discount, but it saves you. And you look at it, you're like, that saved yeah. me a nickel. No, it's it's ridiculous. It's cost me so much money. It's like, and sometimes it's like, I could have just literally walked across the street to the grocery store, but no, nope, not going to do it. No. <laughs> uh, this show is brought to you by Cybersocket.com, the ultimate resource for gay erotica, now newly designed after 25 years strong. Visit Cybersocket for adult star exclusive interviews, movie reviews with free clips, fun contributions for their team of bloggers, uh, including our guest for today, event listings, and their very popular top five column featuring advice for the bedroom. Go to Cybersocket.com. We're also excited to be a media partner for Bear World Magazine. All right. <laughs> Bear World Magazine is now nine years old and is the only lifestyle magazine celebrating the global bear community in all its glorious, diverse beauty. If you have not done so already, head to bearworldmag.com to check out the great berry content and also sign up for the new Woof Report, their new weekly newsletter packed with berry news and gossip. Well, and so Woof Report to me like means like dog, like pup, right? So I, no, I think Woof Report means more like like hot guy who you who you're into. Do you mean? Okay, but I have said, like, well, and like on Scruff, when you woof at somebody, it's like, woof, like, hey. But, like, if you, like, if somebody is, like, wearing something boo-boo, you're like, woof. I, I don't know. To me, woof has such a positive connotation that I don't think you can make it negative anymore. Oh. I know it used to mean that, like, woof, she, she looks like a hot mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just think, I, at least me, have just over-sexualized it so much that it just is, if you hear the word woof, it's just, woof, woof. Woof is good. Yeah. Oof is bad. Yes, that yes, <laughs> that's true. If you take off the W, <laughs> oof. <laughs> oof, or you bad. add a T A and that's oof da. Oof da. Yes. <laughs> How do you know that? Girl, I'm very cultured. Okay. <laughs> I've slept with every man from every, every part of the world. Um, I want to introduce our, our guest who actually can kind of run through these animals with us because he is an expert. Uh, Jack Dyer, in real life, Jack has been a jack of all trades. Starting in the mental health field, he moved into a long-standing career uh, in large-scale special events and owning his own production company for 30 years. He's gone to culinary school. He's a certified trainer. He's a member of the Royal Horticulture Society with a master status in floral design. Mm. I had to add that for <laughs> Jack was also the 10th single gay man to adopt in California. And after taking some photos to immortalize his work he did on his body for a Memorial Day physique competition at Muscle Beach in Venice, he, um, he decided to do porn and he shot his first scene at age 50. In the year and a half that followed, he shot over 90 scenes and has 58 DVD titles. They are still releasing scenes that he's done. Um, and throughout this time, he's worked as a go-go. He was awarded three leather titles, was nominated for various porn industry awards, um, and he became a grandfather in real life. He currently uh, runs a thriving real estate business in Palm Springs, uh, has retired from the industry, but still very much involved behind the scenes. He's married 18 years to the same husband and... Three years to his second husband. Yes, he is a certified uh, thruple belonger. Uh, he currently writes Jack On, which is a Sex in the City meets Daddy Life blog <laughs> for Cybersocket.com. Please welcome Jack Dyer. Yay. Okay, so first of all, like, explain who these animals are. 
because you have a few I've never heard of. Oh, which oh, on my on my blog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the giraffe. The giraffe is like the awkwardly tall and gorgeous, majestic animal I've that walks that, into the room. Before. You've heard the giraffe yeah. before. Have you heard the crow? No, what's the a crow? crow? Oh, the crows are like the old queens that sit back and pick at you. <laughs> the, the crows have eyes. They, they, they just like they just sit there all dressed in black, you know, because they're all oh depressed. So they all, so they all love someone's, Zara. Someone's did, <laughs> someone's recently departed, and they are now picking at the bones of everyone who walks through the door. Those are the crows. Oh my yeah. god! You can be any of the other animals prior to becoming a crow, but once you've turned, you can't go back. That's like the natural progression. Yeah, it is. It's like that's what death's waiting room. Does everybody turn into a crow or just? If, no. if you've turned into crow, you I, just can't uncrow. I think I think if you're I think if you're bitter, you're bitter at your core, mm. and so I think you have to be very bitter to be a. So a crow. there's there's no age for crow. Crow no. can be any age. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's a degree of bitterness. Okay. Yeah. Which I think a lot of our community has become yeah. crows in it's this. It's more the year. oof than the woof. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it full circle. <laughs> when was the first time you had first heard of giraffe, teddy bear? Because I hadn't heard of that. Did I it mean, come from the porn world? I don't know where it is. I, I think it's just because since we're in that world, we're always talking about like, you know, gays love to be like, what animal are you? Because they're like, well, I'm, I'm not a bear. I'm like a hybrid wolf, man, bear, pig thing. Like they, they'd love to be something. Yeah. I think that just came from talking about like, okay, what animal do you not want to be? And I think I've heard, I've heard uh, giraffe. I heard chicken. They're, they're, they're self-identifying. Yeah. You know, it's like whatever in the menagerie of it all. Have you heard salmon? No, what's a salmon? It, salmon is part of it. I, well, here I am here to educate Is it on the you. gay or the lesbian side? It's on I the could, gay side. Oh, really? Just because it's fishy, side. it's a lesbian. Wait, so what? what <laughs> just saying. I want to know this. What are the lesbian animals? Do you know? I don't know what the lesbian animals are. I don't I don't know so what I, keep, I want I, to so know. I, you know. I keep getting asked by lesbians because like, I have some lesbian, I would call them like they're lesbian bears, and they're fans of mine, but they want to actually know. They're like, what are we? Because like, you know, they're, they're bigger women. And they actually like the bear community, but they want to know what animal are they. Well, I would imagine there's like a lioness, you know, a hunter gatherer. Cougar, we we know cougar, cougar, but that's not necessarily that's for the lesbians. But for the bear, like lesbian bears, I'm thinking, would they be called like polar bears? No, the old polar bears are, are old bears. They're white. Okay. white yeah. bears. So, so then, what would they be? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do this. Or if 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 our audience knows, let's uh, let us know. Um, I know one animal would be whatever mascot is for Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> was it like a woodchuck or something? I beaver. They're a beaver. No? No. No. That's just I'm, a vagina. I'm digging myself. Beaver, <laughs> yeah. Beaver's just redundant. Yeah. <laughs> Eager beaver of boyfriend. That used to be one of Betty Davis's. I uh, mean, both of you too young. Anyway. Um, no, but a salmon, going back to salmon, uh, it is from our community. And it's a young, nubile, smoothless like twink that all the bears are trying to grab. Uh, that's a salmon. Oh, my God. That, that's, so it's chum. <laughs> bear chum. Bear chum. Yeah. That's what's left behind. Yeah. Mm. Just covered in chum. And they, and they only come out at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Last call. On grinder on scrub. It's like, mm, -mm. mm We know what kind of crowd that is. Last call, salmon. Yeah, that's mm. that's a deep, deep fried um, salmon. That's burnt or crisp salmon. That's, uh, that smells fishy by that, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Does not keep long. That can't be good. Um, but yeah, getting into porn at the age of 50. Yes. That's not a normal decision, I would imagine. Well, I don't know. You read my resume. There's what was left. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, I was like, your bio is <laughs> long. Nothing <laughs> left. There's not much left to do. I've kind of lived all the lives. So it's, um, yeah, it was, it was on the bucket list. It was one of those things. That, and the thing is, is it wasn't on a bucket list to actually do porn, but it was on the bucket list to be asked to do porn. I think everybody would be flattered. Wait, be so like, who asked you first then? Um, actually, Jeremy Lucido encouraged me to Jeremy. do it first. He took the first photos. And he's he's been very supportive all the way through, and he introduced me to some other folks in the industry, and then it like moved over to Anthony Duran, who's with Nasty mm -hmm. Daddy. I then became the first and only ever um, Nasty Daddy exclusive. I was. It was brief because I went through them fast because you know <laughs> it's like a you know it's like a six uh, like a six film minimum thing that they did. Um, and that's really what an exclusive is. They just basically tell you how many films they're going to get with you. And, and Nasty Daddy videos, I heard that like they actually film quick. They do. Yeah, they do. They they don't mess around. And like, that's and that's and that's the part that kind of screwed me up was that you know it was really easy to get into character and stay in character when you're doing those films because they get it and they're not just sitting back there. It's like you know you're working on a cum shot or you're working on whatever, and they're they're like. And, and they're talking about the Knicks game or whatever, <laughs> which they do, you know, or they're talking about what they had for dinner last night and they're laughing about some joke. And it's like, we're, let's focus on what we're doing here, you guys. You know, we're here for we're here to get this done. And um, 
those the guys Trenton Ducati and uh, Anthony Duran they don't mess around they don't they nope. don't have time for it they want to get multiple scenes in a day so now you've done so then I've I've known you've done um, Nasty Daddy which they film very quickly mm -hmm. then I also know though that you filmed for like Icon Mail yes which is a little bit longer it's thirteen pages of dialogue and mm. twenty people in the room and yeah but you love that kind of role play and you like being. Bit to, of the to center a, of attention to a degree, but when you, you're not the center of attention when you're doing it, you're edited to be the center of attention, mm -hmm. but you're not the center of attention when you're doing it. Everything else is happening. You're a prop. Room. You're a prop. Yeah. Yes. And you and you're like dance monkey, and you get up there and you dance, and that's what you do. But it's really hard to stay hard, hard to stay in character, hard to stay aroused, hard to be into it when it's dragging on, and it's just it's a challenge. And those aren't the fun days. No. No. When they're like six to seven to eight hours long trying to shoot a scene just because people are dicking around um, or, you know, going back and forth to the craft services table, then it's like, oh, come on, you know, let's let's get on this. I always wondered, what is craft services like gummy on a bears. porn set? <laughs> gummy bears. Why gummy bears? Because it's bottom food. It doesn't. It just goes right through you. Well, no, it doesn't go through you. It plugs you up. It plugs oh. you up. Oh. Gelatin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now, what was your experience with the whole daddy culture before filming your first scene? Did you were you called a daddy in a community? Were you dating somebody that called you daddy? Like, what what was your exposure to all of that? I think with anything I was ever labeled, I was labeled before I knew what it was, or even made an association to myself on it. You know, whether I was a faggot or I was a whatever it was, I was told I was before I knew I was. Um, it's not something that I claimed immediately and I still don't you know the whole porn star thing just bugs the hell out of me because I don't feel like I'm a porn star, star. you know I'm like you know jazz hands no I don't, <laughs> that's, I don't do that but I, I do feel like I'm an accomplished actor I was a working actor and it was acting because if you know me you know that I if you know me in my real life and not as Jack then you know that Jack is Jack and I'm absolutely not that so um, there's a you know it's a it's be, it's the difference between chocolate and vanilla. I mean, it really is, and it's all fantasy, so it's acting. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of being called daddy, I was called daddy by uh, a trick. You know, I don't know, probably thirty years ago, thirty years ago, and and it was just like I'm like mm, I don't know if I like that. You know, it was like it was it was weird, and I I don't know that I still like it. Frankly, it's not the when it when it's depends on who says it, I guess, and how it's said. But it's um, it's interesting. It's now you said something that like um, I n I noticed like you were saying about like there's you know there's two different characters there's mm. Jack and then there's Nod right. Do you, have you had an issue where you meet somebody who's not like a porn star who like you're gonna hook up with, and you feel pressure or they make you feel pressured to be Jack? Um, it's happened a couple of times because I've you know through the whole process of of being Jack I was married and we were in an open relationship mm -hmm. so I, I'm just put that out there yes it has happened where I've had sex outside of my marriage and um, and that was even before you know number three came along or 33 came along um, we call him 33 because he's the third and he was 33 when he started with us so we, call, we I refer to him in my blog as 30 not because he's your 33 33rd boyfriend no no well, no, <laughs> well could have mm, maybe that but <laughs> Out of three in front of that. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, that's not. That's not. But uh, yeah, th I mean, there is some of that where they where they see that portrayal. And for a while there, um, when we uh, when I first moved to Palm Springs, I, everyone knew me as Jack, and many people still call me Jack just because that's how they know me. And uh, well, stop I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest because like I've always known you as Jack. Mm -hmm. I don't know your real name. Yeah, and like I know you. Yeah, <laughs> and we have a lot of personal friends that are not in the porn community right. in Palm Springs, especially mm -hmm. and it's Jack, because you know the whole daddy figure in Palm Springs is you know it has a certain celebrity it status and it's an older. It's a porn capital. It doesn't hurt anything, and uh, you know my business. I I have a I have a <coughs> real estate company, and you can research it. And if you're bored enough to do that, you can. It's called Three Bears Realty. We are Three <gasps> Bears Realty. Oh, I love that. And it's really cool. And it was we weren't naming ourselves here again in this situation. Our clients named us. They called me Papa Bear. My husband is Mama Bear because that's his personality where he's very nurturing. I'm not. I'm really like, this is how it is. This is how it's, this is what to expect. And I'm wa I'm more waterboarding. I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm not like, here it is. I yep. can't. I can't. No, I'm not going to hold your hand. Um, if you need I'm going to slap your hand away. If you need hand holding, go to him. So they go to him for that. And then they, they call 33 baby. So 
and they everyone calls him baby out in the out in the bars they call him you know where's baby where's baby and he's he's just known as baby so he's the baby yeah I'm and so we went we act, were actually just supposed to be a luxury brand and that was what we were going to do and then they kept calling us that and i'm like okay there's something there's something to that so <laughs> let's just go with it you know and it worked don't it's fight great. it the best part of it though is is that other realtors and all of that, I know we're not talking about real estate, but um, other realtors and things only like market to themselves about, oh, I'm in mid I sell mid century homes. I'm like, oh, fine, you can sell mid century homes. I'll sell everything else. That's not a problem at all. And the, in, and they have nothing else to market, but because we have the Three Bears thing, we have the whole story thing, there's a lot, it lends itself to a lot of different marketing. So even when we're not selling, we have other things to say. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it kind of works out really well. It kind of pisses people off, which is kind of great. <laughs> do, do both of you think like the whole daddy image kind of took off and you said like maybe 30 years ago was the first time was because some of the original porn stars that kind of crossed over not that they be, were mainstream but that they were well known were aging in the industry but they were still filming is that is that where I don't you guys think that the no? I don't think daddy came until I think it was kind of like a you know a catchphrase daddy but the actual category of daddy I think evolved after the AIDS crisis Really oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that? Because I feel like there was prior to it, it was a very closeted culture mm -hmm. that that men of a certain age, you know, you know, would as we say, you know, that you could tell a man's uh, persuasion by his carriage and demeanor. But um, it was uh, it was at a time where they remained closeted, mm -hmm. unless you were really flamboyant and you know they just it was kind of bird cagey and you did what you did. But other than that, for the most part, we weren't out and proud. And we became out and proud after that period of time. And as soon as the you know AZT started kicking in and people weren't dying anymore, there was a whole generation of people that were HIV positive and people that had made it through that that little needle, you know, and made it through the hole and and got through. And they are going into Silver Daddy now. They're turning into Silver Daddy because they're out and proud and they're hunky masculine men. And I think that personally, this is my opinion, and I am opinionated, that's why I'm here, um, that that's my personal opinion, that that's where the true daddy category came from. It evolved from that. So you don't think that there's an age number for daddy anymore? Or ever? Or do you? Into uh, some degree. You know, um, and he's going to hate that I tell him this, because I tell him this to his face and he hates it, but I don't see Trenton Ducati as a daddy. Why is that? I, because I don't feel like he has that... That, that daddy thing. I know. I, f I feel like he's more of like a like a grown up twink that's a mentor. You know, like okay. he's the he's the co he's the senior on the on the varsity team. Do you, you think know? it's just because he's too like pretty, or which perhaps, is not a, which is not perhaps, a bad thing I mean, to be. Perhaps. No, but I, I feel think like maybe a daddy is energy. I feel yeah. like a daddy has like a bear is. You can have the energy of a bear. Yeah. You don't. It doesn't. It like the looks or whatever. It's it's right. about the energy. And it, it's a. There's a bit of a, a ruddiness to a, a daddy. I think it's like you, where you've embraced your wrinkles, you've embraced your face, you've embraced your. your we were talking about that stuff. Like bears, like in that, and like the daddies. It's about like they just. It's not that you stop trying. It's that no. you don't. You stop fighting. Whatever it is you have, and, and you that's, celebrate. Yes, yeah. and, and that's and, and fighting, that you celebrate it, and that just sparks your charisma, which makes you even more sexy. Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, age is kind to men. It really is. Yeah. Just stop fixing it and stop. Go I mean, I haven't put Botox in his face for. Quite well, and uh, and I don't I don't intend to, and it's like I, d I have no interest I mean, in it. We can't say the same. <laughs> I've never had bo Botox. I mean, I have natural fillers. <laughs> You've never had Botox? No. no, I'm terrified of it because if something medically will go wrong with anybody, right. it's going to happen to me. Right. Like even like if I chose to get a manicure, freezes, like <laughs> literally that would happen to me. That's my luck. Like if I want to get a manicure, finally uh, it'll get like chop off your fingers. Yes, something like that will happen. So no, I'm I'm, I'm very scared. Mm -mm. I think that's an irrational fear that we can address later. Um, <laughs> see, I don't, even I see, I don't see you stupid. as a daddy. I don't see you as a daddy. I see you as a daddy up and comer. Yes, da a daddy, dad in training. Yeah, but I, I but I don't see you there yet. Pers but there's, oh, okay. Personally, that's just my opinion. There's like studio scenes. I, like I, I don't disagree with you though because like I have fans call me daddy, and I don't think of myself as right. that yet. And and I, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, because you don't. It's not. I, it happened to me. That's why I'm saying it's like. When people tell you that, and pretty soon, all it takes is three people to tell you you look sick for you to start feeling sick, right? Okay, so it takes like how many people to call you daddy before you're like, oh yeah, I'm a daddy. It's that. Mm -hmm. You weren't always a bear. That's you true. didn't embrace your hair. Yeah, you knew me when I used to shave it. Yeah, yeah. I saw a video or I saw a post that you did that somebody was hair shaming you. A company. So 
Yeah, just to I have shout a problem them, with that. <laughs> just to I shout the company that. again that illegally used my image Epify at Global. Global. <laughs> Please hate and comment on their page. Um, yeah, it's been a year of them illegally using my videos and literally putting in the caption, this is ugly, be, like, be ashamed, gross. And it's a video of this me. This is 2021. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. It's, I saw that and I'm like, there is no <clears throat> way. There is no way. But and th- this is what I get angry is because like, I have fans ask me, did you agree to this? And they're almost hurt. Which yeah. I also want to tell my fans, I love you guys, but you should be smart enough to know I'm not going to shave or wax off my body hair. Ever. Right. I don't want to go unemployed, okay? Yeah. But I but I can honestly say I knew you when, when you used to brush your hair, and you would actually make a difference. Now, not so much. It just goes. It's oh, just, we, we've talked well, about his routine with the flat ironing and on, the relaxer. She's unruly now. She's unruly, yeah. <laughs> But you notice that uh, like the porn studios have started labeling a lot of scenes as daddy, and it happens with women in straight porn. Uh, they're a MILF if they're 30 years old. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, Wesley Woods, you know, he, he's retired, but um, he was starting to be labeled as a daddy. He's like, what, what the hell? Like, it just it does make sense. And, uh, and I would love to talk to you about this, but it also has started, um, I think, uh, increasing with the whole like incest kind of fantasy, mm-hmm. stepdad, stepbrother, yeah. and I think that's where more of family names were given. Well, I, that's one of my questions I, I had here to ask you, because I just, does it bother you that like a lot of porn that you've been cast in, and this happens with many guys um, that are daddy, is all about incest? Like, well, yeah. it's, a fa- it's, a, it's the number yeah. one most searched in the U.S., and especially in like the southern states. Well, gee, the, I wonder why. Yeah, it is the most searched thing always is Incest porn, incest right. porn, incest porn. Why do we want to all fuck our dads and sons? <laughs> because that was who, we got issues. But that's where you discovered it. I mean, you you're looking. I mean, seriously, that's when no, you discovered honest. you were gay. Is usually and probably someone who was in your own family who sparked an interest. You sparked an interest in when you were coming of age. I'm glad you, where, s- you said where that. you found you found something they did, something they said, some, the hand on the shoulder, you know, to congratulate you, whatever it was, and you melted and you felt it in your testicles. That's your first impression, and that's so what hot is. What you, you said, what you said, literally brought up for me. Mm-hmm. It was when I was, I think, it was like six years old, and my uncle took me to YMCA, and I saw him get out of the shower, and for the first time ever, I saw a full bush. Yeah, and I had never seen it. I remember being only six, but I remember literally getting a ping, right? Uh, which was honestly hormones. It was my first feeling of it's like your natural s- reaction. Yeah, and I had never known that feeling and to this like it like you said that was my first experience of seeing a naked man's bush that I was just oh, right. Wow. Yeah. I like that and I want to g- that is where I'm going to go in life. Right. And I remember, you know, taking a bath and having uh, with my brother cuz I was very young at the time. I was probably well this is 1973 4. You can do the math. I'm back. <laughs> Come on, I can't, I mathematician. Can't do math. I'm not either. I'm not going to. Young. I was young. And and I remember, like, my dad would get in, the, get in the tub to, like, bathe us and would just get naked to get in the tub because he wasn't going to get wet. You yeah. know, it was like, well, what, he was going to take a shower after. That was the whatever. Too. Most parents and I can remember vividly, vividly, where he was leaning over to get um, a shampoo bottle or something like that, and his cock was, like, right in front of my forehead. I remember, like, he wasn't, it was nonchalant, it was completely innocent, but I remember going, I'm gonna be that big that day, someday. I'm gonna be that big someday. Wow. And it was so big, and I was like, oh my God. And you could kind of smell, it was musky and yummy and all that good stuff, which makes you all, you know, showing. Um, so, the kids at home are whacking right now. <laughs> but um, it, it, uh, it made such an impression. So I can understand it. I can understand it. The thing that was like not fantastic for me was being cast as a grandfather, which mm. was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, well, but you're, if you're only making a 50... daddy's twenty eight years yeah. old. I mean, <laughs> you're a only a fifty five year old grandfather, and I'm like a fifty five year old grandfather. I remember when fifty five was old. It's not old. Yeah, they like cast you as like the great great grandfather. You're just in a grave. They're like, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna inject Trimix, and you're just gonna be a dead corpse. It's yeah. called grave fucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in time for Halloween. Oh, Grandpa that'd be, that'd be stiff. A yeah, that's our new brand, Grandpa Stiff. Yeah. Do you think it could also be the flip side? So I had no male figures growing up. I was raised by my mom and my grandma. And so I was fascinated with male figures. Um, they wouldn't even let me be in Boy Scouts because I didn't have like a father figure. And I was looking at all the other kids with their fathers. Um, and I remember we had like a neighbor that would go jogging everybody. And I would just want to like hang out with him because I didn't have any of that unknown. male. Yeah. 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 Wait, why wouldn't they let you have a male figure? That's not. 
No, I didn't have a male figure. Oh, I thought you said they, they wouldn't have had to have you. one to kind of stand up for oh, you. Oh, you had to have one to be in Yeah, Boy they're Scouts. like, well, you, you, don't, you don't, I remember specifically because it's ingrained in my mind. It was Catholic school, a yeah. lot of bullshit happening. Uh, my mom was never married, so there was all that happening. But it was like, oh, no, you don't have a dad. You can't be in Boy Scouts. And they literally, from my first meeting, I went home crying because- And Father's Day really that's sucked because so you had to make an ashtray for no one. And it's like, yeah, I mean, all those things. My mom always made sure Father's Day and all that was like super, super fun. I mean, that, I, I never missed out because Alexander, of my, don't what, cry. Oh, don't, I see the tears welling up in your eyes. Stop. <laughs> Stop. It's okay. <laughs> but you know, there are, it's right. We, I guess, we don't realize how how much family, uh, the way we were raised, or images from our childhood, um, kind of sexualized. I, yeah. I always thought like the whole incest thing was because since most of us never got love from our parents, are you secretly always just wanting to fuck your parents? Could be that too. Because they they always they always say that everybody wants to kill their parents is like the theory it's of the people. Freudian. Yeah. So everybody wants to kill them. Er them. I guess maybe everybody wants to fuck, marry, kill. Your family. <laughs> Very wow. small family. That yeah. would be awkward. <laughs> wow. That was a long con to get to that punchline. That was a long con. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's this podcast. Wow. wow. The long con. The long con. <laughs> also, there's the trend that um, when I came out, and I'm not going to give my age, but when I came out, like older guys at the bar were seen as creepy, like a young kid and an older guy was so gross. And now... Nobody even bats an eye if there's a 20-year difference, 30-year difference. It's like, okay, it's just part of the norm now. Not true. Okay. Not true. I think that's geographical. I don't think mm -hmm. that's the same in, in – I oh, think you are lecherous in, in L.A. I think you oh. – well, Where there are sugar oh, no, daddies a galore. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I'm thinking of – I'm actually talking about Palm Springs. In Palm Springs, it's like you can swing a cat and hit yeah. – well, and, and the thing is is that everybody thinks they're going for daddies, and everyone there is on a fixed income, so joke's on you. Yeah. But <laughs> That is very true. It's so true. <laughs> but – and there's more of them than there are of anyone coming. In. So the influx, you know, they feel really full of themselves because they never pay for a drink and they're all two dollar drinks. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. Um, there's that. But I'm thinking I but still here in West Hollywood and body conscious L.A. Central, I think that there is a place for that, but it is not every place. I don't mm -hmm. think that the, the, the those who are perceived as lecherous are in every bar. I don't think so. I think they're fish out of water and sub. I think they're salmon. No, I think they're fish in water. <laughs> wow, <laughs> went there. Um, there, I think they're a little fish out of water in in most places. Most of the you know the mainstream gay bars. Yep, Silver Lake. It's a completely different story. <laughs> completely different story. At, at downtown, completely different story. But West Hollywood proper. Mm, yeah, I think it's so it's so skewed, and it's a bunch of twelves looking for a fifteen. So. It's very tough. It's a very tough crowd. Hmm. There. And, <laughs> and we're back. All right. Well, <laughs> let's talk about another um, kind of hot topic and something I'm fascinated mm. by, and that's the idea of a thruple. Yes. And, you know, there's like, there's terms of like polyamorous now, and there's open relationship, there's, you know, polymonogamous, wh wh what have you. Um, and thruple is like, it, ha it has its own definition. How, how would you define your thruple. Well, first of all, every thruple is different because mm -hmm. just like yeah. every rela relationship has its own rules and deal breakers and things like that. And for us, it's, you know, we would be, me, my husband and I would be legally married to 33 if we could. And the world would catch up. You know, it will. Because a while ago, we weren't able to get married. And so, and now we are. We are legally married. We have the documentation. They can't take it away at this point. So, um, do you really think the world will catch up? Where the I absolutely do. I totally disagree. Because then you I can have the conservatives be like, then you can marry a goat. Then you yeah. can marry your daughter. Or hey, well, we whatever. got past the conservatives and we got marriage. So I think that there is, um, I think that there are a, a slew of other distractions that are coming on the horizon that will make that seem not so terrible. But let me ask you this. Does it, does that even matter to you getting another piece of paper? It doesn't matter to me. It matters to 33. Oh, yeah, I would see that because he would always feel mm -hmm. like the third wheel is not an official part. Like an adopted kid who never officially gets that well, title. And I can see that. Cause, so the thing that I've noticed a lot of people when they see like polyamorous couples or like thruples, everybody always says like, well, there's the top one. That's the real couple. And the other one is just their, you know, it's their boy toy until they get bored. And I think that's what they a lot, age. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of people view it as. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess I actually can see why they want to have another form of it to be its, it's validation. It's validation. Like. And what and what um, 
what 33 is going to do is actually change his last name legally. So we'll all have the same last name. So that's really important. It, it kind of all came to a head last summer when um, I was having chest pains and was rushed to the hospital. I thought I was having a heart attack, but I have esophagus, something or another. So we're working on that. But um, they wouldn't allow him into even the, the waiting room because of COVID, number one. Oh. But then he wasn't a legal partner and wasn't any, he wasn't even a son, you know technically so um he had to actually sit in the car and wait and he waited there for That's seven true. hours in the car and it's like dude you know so that the reality of that situation was and and his family is incredibly supportive he was on the phone with his dad his dad's like show me who, show me who which one with this I'm, I'm on my way i'm gonna knock him out you know like you know what are you gonna do you know it's like what are you gonna make this your plight you can't this is this is bigger than us so you, we we have to do what we can do and what we can do is, all right, change our last name so that on the surface, it's like, yes, he's my brother. Yes, he's my son. Yes, he's whatever you want to call him, but he has a right to be there. I mean, but also, it's one of those things. I'm sorry, hospitals, you're paying how much for your insurance? Right. I should be able to literally write on a piece of paper and say, so-and-so is allowed to come in. That's all you need to or know. Or if I want a hot dog right after emergency surgery, give me a hot dog. Well, I mean, that could be a health issue that how they're trying you, to sir? save your life. How dare you? <laughs> This is a little bit different situation yes. than that. So I'm just thinking about hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see that. Yeah. There's a good segue, I'm sure. Now, Somewhere. do you get, like, whenever you talk about your relationship with people, do you feel like you get a lot of judgment where people just don't believe it's real? Like it's real love? Or do you, um, just, or you just not care about what they say I really, anymore? truly don't care. I mean, it's hard to answer that in a way that's, that I, it, there's not a pat answer yeah. because I truly don't care what other people think and we don't care what people think outside of our home. And so we there's are people aren't even in your life then. then. Oh, no, no. Yeah. No. But I'm very curious because a lot of the throuples that I know are more of, about the sex. And mm, I've, I've mm. met your husbands. Um, it's a very different energy. Mm -hmm. You do feel like you're hanging out with like a family unit with mm -hmm. the, the, the funny jokes, but the bickering and the like that bitch. And you know, all this. Yeah. Kind of, it's, it's very familiar. It's not about the sexual energy. But... Um, being married from for 18 years with one person is very different than having somebody for three years. That person that comes in late, I mean, will they always feel like an outside? Or do you feel like you guys have to, the two of you have to like cater and nurture that a little bit more because 18 years versus thir three years, well, that's when, a huge gap. When we started, it was, it was, there was a, I, I don't know if I've ever told you the story of how we met and all of that. I, I actually uh, picked up Stephen first. <laughs> At a bar, at the bar, no. and yes, I did. And uh, two weeks later, I was filming in uh, in Florida, and I got a phone call, and it was so I brought something home, and I want to know if we can keep him. And it was, and it sure enough, the husband picked him up at a bar as well. And so it was like he was interested in both of us separately, didn't know, and he, the only way he knew is that they went back to my old, my apartment. Like, I, thought, like, I thought you were talking about a puppy at first. Well, kind of <laughs> <laughs> same thing. You're yeah, he, he kind of is like a puppy. He's cute. I, he's I found cute. this stray wandering yeah, the street. Sweet. He's cute. <laughs> he has his shot. It's okay. <laughs> he's housebroken. Um, so yeah, he he, and so we we said that yes, indeed, that that could happen. And he was in he was getting out of a really bad tumultuous relationship and. Things kind of progressed, moved really quickly because it was like, what's the point of going and moving into an apartment when we know that this is going to be inevitable? Let's just try this and see how it works. And it's got to work for everyone or it doesn't work for anyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, financially and everything, the husband and I are, are connected because we have taxes that, you know, are older than him. And we have we have a daughter and we have a granddaughter and we have all these things that are pre-33. So they're pre-him. So... And and so we're we also have, you know, a lot of our stories are are interlinked as as his he's getting to know who those stories are and what they're about and all the people involved. But he wasn't there for him. So it's a very different. It's one thing to talk about September 11th. It's one thing to be there. Mm -hmm. So he's he's gearing the talk and we were actually there I'm in in metaphor. But um, and so that was always going to be part of the relationship and it is still part of the relationship, but we're creating more and more memories all the time. Like this, we're taking him to, um, his birthday's in November. So we're taking him to New York for the first time. He's never been to New York. So we're oh. going to New York for a week and hitting all the shows yeah, and the Rockettes oh. and hoopty hoopty, all that Christmas stuff. Christmas time. Uh -huh. Oh, he's going to love it. That's, that's when it's New York is magical. It's the best. Like yeah. I, 
anybody that has ever like hated New York or this, I'm like, go during Christmas right time. Center, and you, center, the shops. Mm-hmm, you will just feel like the spirit, this wonder that you're just like, oh, I love this city. It's so it's I everything. love Thanksgiving because there may be like three or four little leaves left on the trees, but it's and it just Central Park is amazing anyway, but it's not like so cold that Jim Barrow will be mm-hmm. outside all day long and you can just go and walk and walk and walk. And all the windows are done. Mm-hmm. You know, Christmas is settled it's in parade. people are wearing the beautiful coats and then by the time you get home the weather's changed and you really feel like a season has changed here in california because it really doesn't <laughs> so if you're away from it for a week and you kind of hard reset you feel like oh it got cooler it got whatever it feels like now it feels like i'm in the holiday it's 80 so, degrees outside right yeah, now yeah, like no. we don't get to experience seasons. it's stupid um and but i'm still drinking pumpkin spice lattes oh, yeah. hot <laughs> like, hot day one it was available i'm like rah, rah, rah. extra hot extra hot so jack i have to uh, ask you what if what if 33 mm-hmm. what if he met somebody that he fell in love with um and he wanted to bring uh a quadruple in does is that that's a word? not an option oh, is, is that a word though quadruple like in a, is it called that that's not an option if he wants to have that would be polyamorous he, then yeah that okay. would be polyamorous it's yeah and and the thing is is that that doesn't work for it doesn't work and the reason much of the reason why i retired from porn was because of 33 was he getting jealous a bit a bit there was i shot a scene in vegas and he wanted to come along because he knew um sebastian keys who was the director uh for kink.com and so he wanted to come along and sebastian said yeah bring bring him along and let's you know he can just sit on the set or whatever he's never been on the set so it was it was a weird thing (laughs) it got really weird very quickly um i don't like people just sitting in on set i'm like it's not gonna be funny well he was like in another room and everything else but if you can hear it and you not even see it it's like and so Apparently, I said something in the heat of it that I, is something that I have said to him in the heat of it. And he got really bent out of shape because he thought it was specific to him. Well, you know, uh, there's so much dirty talk you can only say. There's, there's only a so repertoire. Much, literally, there's you, only so many th- yeah. fuck, fuck, fuck you it's can a, say. It's a finite thing, you <laughs> know. We've all said stuff in the bedroom in the heat of the moment that the next 10 minutes we're like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know her. I don't even know what I said. Yeah, it's just like it comes up. It's diarrhea. But he, but no diarrhea in the bedroom. No. But um, <laughs> that, 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 that just shifted Ammonium. real fast. <laughs> cut that out. Cut that out. Um, no, but he, he heard that. And when I came out, came when I came off set, he was just like in tears and like practically fetal. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I had to drive home all the way back to Palm Springs that night. Ooh. Yeah, after that was not fun. So now we're going a lot of chats that night. What if your 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 first husband wanted to bring somebody else in? Well, he's done that. I mean, we've done. Oh, not like now? You mean sexually. now? Sexually? Yeah, n- not s- sexually. I I don't. I, it's something we'd have to discuss. I mean, I I think it's really something. I don't see that happening. I don't perceive that happen. I don't. If see it's possible that. to love three people. Or two other people, why isn't it possible to love four other people or five other people? It just people? sounds like so much work. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of laundry, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of laundry. That's, not the, that's, not, the lo- that's not the loads that you want to be doing. No. No, <laughs> so it's stupid. really not sexy. <laughs> we did, however, get a maid twice a week because I don't want to do the laundry. So what are you telling the people. maid? Like, Oh, she's... You know what, though? The thing is, and you've been with all three of us. Yes. There is... It doesn't feel weird. I think if you told no, it somebody, really I, it, no, I think you, you told somebody you're in a throuple. I think there is just natural fascination. You want to know? You well, you had a million questions. I still have a million questions. Yeah, but, you know, it's logistical questions more than anything else. But knowing who we are, you can see how we all complete each other. It was like mm-hmm. he was the missing piece, and he got we got to a certain point in our relationship where kind of been there, done that, had all the conversations of what you're going to have. We have shared thought. We finish each other's sentences. Blah blah blah. But there was still something missing you know and that that and 33 just kind of filled that void so to speak and it works and and so and and so it, when you're with us as a family it's completely not weird it's not sexual either it's not like you guys are you know blowing each other right you know no, it's like we're in a no, throuple like no, ah! no. and 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 do, do, do most people do you feel like you need to like you know tongue pop in front of your parents no you don't yeah. you can like sit and watch a movie well, and so like, how, maintain yourself how did you that's what i want to do next is so how did you because like as gay people and we have different lifestyles and different things there's many times we have to like, re-come out to our family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like i had to re-come out to my family that i'm a porn star re-come out right. that i'm like you know when you're gay did you have to have like a coming out to your family to l- explain that you're in this 
Or did they kind of just get it and not even have to ask questions? No, um, no, you have to. I mean, yeah. you have to. They weren't there from the beginning, so they don't understand how it evolves. And usually, they're you know, it's a few weeks in before you'd even introduce them, and they're like, "The Rick, I thought yeah. that, yeah, that it, hmm? yeah." There's that. Yeah. Uh, you've been going for 18 years. Uh, my family has not been my, as a whole, has not been in my life since uh, my daughter left when she was 17. Um, and so, and there's a whole other, that's a whole other podcast. But, um, so my personal family has not been that involved. Recently, since 33 has been involved, a couple, I've got three, four nieces and nephews that have come back. Mm -hmm. And my oldest brother and his wife have come back. And we're actually doing family Christmas this year. That's and awesome. it's super cool. And we've got two god nephews, or two great nephews now. And they all know him as an uncle. So they all call him uncle. And it was like, if you're going to come back, this is where we're at. And you either need to get on board with where we're at or don't come back. Yeah, and right, that's okay. And, you, you know, that's on you. And that I'm not going to be hurt on it because I've already been hurt. I already mourned you as though you were dead. So for you to come back, it's like Lazarus. You, you know, you're fantastic. But if, if you're not, if you can't take me for what I am now, and the porn thing came out at the same time. I came out with the porn stuff too because I was like, I don't want you hearing about something else. It's like th this is this is where I am at. This is the snapshot of me. I'm glad you just ripped the bandaid out oh. right away instead of I mean, continuing yeah, to keep doing it. You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna lay it on. No. accept everything, or we can move on because, like right. you said, I've already survived without you. This is where I am. This is where I've been. This is everything that's happened to me, and this is where we're going. And if you want to be on board with that, then fantastic. And that that can't happen for everybody. I know that it happened because I'm like. I have the resume that I've kind of worked through all of that through all of my life and I don't freaking care at mm -hmm. this point for myself I don't care so you can't hurt me okay you can't hurt me um, you can't hurt my family my family knows about me what's the worst thing you can do show them pictures they've already seen them uh, okay what yeah. <laughs> nothing there's nothing nobody, you got, you nobody got can nothing. blackmail you yeah exactly and recently I came out again on Facebook because I had you know, I have a real estate career and I have people that know me for that and don't know me. They don't know Jack. And so I came out to everybody about everything. Mm -hmm. And I just said, here it is. This is all of it. This is what's happened. We are, we are in a very loving relationship. And, you know, there's it's called Three Bears for a reason. And this is the reason. And um, yes, I, I did porn. I don't have no intention of doing any more scenes or shooting again. It's just not something I care to do anymore. But it did happen, it's out there, it's immortal, it's gonna keep going, and if you look for it, you're gonna find it. And if you don't look for it, you won't find it. So I've heard, you know, mm. we have a lot of friends yeah. in the industry, and I've heard people say, oh yeah, Jack only did it for a year and a half, and you know, now he's too good to be in porn, he's never gonna come back, because you've said, I'm not gonna come back. Like I said, your scenes are still being released, mm -hmm. you're still being nominated, people are still talking about you as the daddy star, not even realizing that you've retired. Right. But people in the business are like, oh, what, you, you can only do it f for that long? You took advantage of our industry, and now you have this brand? I took advantage wait, of the industry. Wait, people actually got, ma got mad at him for coming in and then coming out? There's the bitchy comments. You right. know there's a lot of bitchy comments, and it's like, you know. It's your own body. They don't own your They don't own your cock. I'm sorry. Well, it had nothing to do with my body or my cock, actually. It was out of jealousy. Well, no. The reason why I left the business was a, a little bit because of my relationship, but also as an actor, as a porn actor, there are no residuals. Mm -hmm. you, no one's gonna be Tom Cruise in this situation. You're not gonna have you know, an eternal spring of money that's gonna come from this thing. The most you're gonna get is a free drink at a bar, frankly, after you've done your scene, because you're gonna get paid for your scene, and there is no extras, there's no bump ups. You are maybe an appearance fee or something along those lines that you'll get, but there is no residual, and the people who are making the money are the people that are recutting your films and sending them out again. So. As a businessman, which I have been since I was 18 years old, I could see the writing on the wall. I wanted to complete the task. I wanted to finish the scenes that I wanted to do so that no one could ever say, I didn't shoot with a black man or I didn't shoot with a whatever. You know, I didn't want any of that to happen. I shot the kinkiest stuff. I drank the piss. I did all that stuff. I did it all because I never wanted anyone to say that he didn't do it or that he was a niche. So why didn't you then, because it sounds like you just... Mm. Why didn't you then just start your own? Like, why didn't you start doing like like what I do? Of I've turned my OnlyFans and everything into like its own brand, its own company. Why didn't you just do that? Because I really didn't have interest in it. Uh, well, then, I really, yeah, then it wasn't. There's your answer. Yeah. It Did wasn't. you ever have a good time, or what, yeah. was it fun at some point? You know what? I, the thing is, is that 
the thing I found that was very interesting about it is the people that are involved. There are so many obscure, walking wounded, hysterical, funny people that are family members now that I would con that would take a bullet for me and I would for them. Uh, except the bitches that are saying this shit about me <laughs> behind my back, you by the way. Push them in front of them. And I probably <laughs> bought their drink when they said it, so there's that, which makes me feel fantastic. But um, but it's, but it's the people that are involved in it, and, and to go on a set with Shishi LaRue, frankly, is like, <laughs> it's a Fellini movie. Can it we, really is. Need, it's a circus. We need a special podcast just dedicated to stories of people that have done Oh my God. Gigi. Oh like, my God. <laughs> I've heard good and bad things, so, you know. Well, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. She's not at all what you would expect. She's not like a director like anyone else. Well, we'll have to yeah. ch chat with her. Yeah. Chuck, I want to know what your mm. uh, view of, you know, when you were raised, and uh, we've talked about this before, of how you came up with the, with the Jack Dyer persona and the mm -hmm. name comes from these very masculine kind of images from your, from your youth. Yep. Also, porn, we know early porn was all about, like, the manly, like, it was Jeff Stryker in prison and, like, ugh, you know? And then mm -hmm. we kind of in the 90s got into, like, the smooth, all of that, but it was still very masculine. Now we have this trend with non-binary, trans porn, um, and even in mainstream Holly uh, Hollywood, we have actors now saying that they're non-binary. What's your take, having come from this uber-masculine uh, porn environment? Do you think these kind of themes have a place in adult film? I think every I think everything has a place for it. I think if any th if there's interest in it, there's a convention for it. I think honestly, if it if it makes you turned on, then there are a million other people it turns on. It's it, we're not unique in that way. Mm -hmm. Our drive is our drive, and what turns our swirl turns our swirl. And I have this thing where I, I, I'm going to coin it myself. It's not, <laughs> it's not a fetish, it's a swirl. A swirl <laughs> is on the way to a fetish. A fetish is a commitment. Mm -hmm. You're committing to it. You're learning how to do it. You're not going to just go into ropes training or go and get tied up without learning how to do ropes properly and becoming part of the fetish and ha learning the fetish. Doing it on a weekend is a swirl. Okay. Okay. So it's like, it's not. You're, it, you're just trying it on for size. It's not something you're going to do every day. Like when a guy says, "Oh, I'm so kinky," and, and you're like, "What's your kink?" He's like, "I've worn a jock strap." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's that swirl. Makes me That's laugh. all swirl. It's like, I was like, "You're swirly. You're swirly. You're hilarious. <laughs> you're hilarious. Just so kinky. Yeah, so kinky." Mm. And then it's like, okay, well, let's be kinky, and then they freak out, and run out the bedroom. It's like, <laughs> when you come off like a, like a knife and like mask, right? What kind of kink are you doing, girl? There's all kinds it's of Halloween kink, baby. spooky season. There's all it's kinds spooky. of kink and all Love kinds me. Don't of kill things. Me. <laughs> well, you know, all the all the girls that got you know killed in these things were all wearing a half slip and a hairnet half the time, or you know, a yeah. shirt, that was, and it was all very sexual. Yeah. That's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he hit me and it felt like a kiss. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what are your best uh, sex tips? My best sex tip: have it. I, but we've all had bad sex. It's, that's not necessarily well. What bad I sex say. happens on the way to good sex. Bad like sex is don't practice. Be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of it. And people, there's such fear. And you know, when I was coming out, it was um, we were in the thick of we were in the thick of the AIDS crisis, and so it was very fear based. And it was like, don't touch, don't do whatever. You know, cover yourself in Teflon so nothing cover. You know, every it was condoms, condoms, condoms. I hated condoms. I always did. Um, and it, it, it's, it put this, like this pall on, on having sex that it was going to hurt you, mm -hmm. that you're, you know, the long-term effects of having one night of ecstasy or whatever it was, which also was a joke too, because it's, you know, it's all five minutes. It's not a night of <laughs> ecstasy. Let's, I mean, come on, we all have to eat and have a conversation, but, um, it's, it, in your mind that 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 it puts this um damper on things and my i just say just power through it just power through it have it have it as much as you can enjoy it and find what works for you and if it feels good once it'll feel good 50 times i like that mm -hmm. Very positive. fear nothing there's fear a nothing. shot for it there's a shot <laughs> for it people aren't dying of hiv anymore people are, i don't have hiv but people aren't dying of it anymore and the pills are great. You don't even know that people have it anymore because the medicine belly isn't part of it anymore. It's not a side effect. Mm -hmm. So, and, and people are non-detectable. And if you're not detectable, you're not going to get you it. So it. It's, you can't transmit it. So the point is, is keep people undetectable. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's what's happening. And we, 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 the general medical public is me. But um, that's what's happening now. So 
there's nothing to fear. You know, all right, so you're going to get gonorrhea. Well, there's a shot for that. You can do, you know, it's like, take care of it. It's not a big deal. Get a, have a great relationship with your doctor. But you've also, you, you definitely are somebody who's been sexually educated for a while. Because there's, yeah. I'm still meeting some people who literally will be like, they don't understand what undetectable means. And I've told them, I was like, girl, I've known about that for 10 years. Right. This is not brand new scientific information. Right. It's just you're now finally seeing an ad and a poster telling you you should have already known this fact. Right. You equals you. Yeah. Um, and but people on Grinder are still saying oh, man. clean only that word. Yeah. I'm like clean should just mean your butthole. No fats, yeah. no like, fans. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hate that shit. Well, but that's another uh. thing because I don't think it's an issue to put what you want when you go to a restaurant. You order a hamburger. Yeah. If I have onions in the hamburger, I will throw up that hamburger. I hate onions, so I'm going to be very explicit. I want my hamburger without onions. If you say no fats, no femmes, that's just not what you're sexually attracted to. You can't get hard to. What's wrong with saying that? And you're talking to somebody who you know is of a certain... It doesn't offend you? <coughs> my, I, it's what they want sexually. It's their yeah. menu. Yeah, but the, yeah. Thing, the thing is... It's I, not like they're, I'm going to change their mind with my singing Lydia, voice. Yeah, but you, I don't think you list your whole entire menu because, example, when the waiter... But there for what no, you want. But when the waiter comes to take your order, before you even speak, they at least say, like, hi, welcome, can I get your water? You don't right away say, no onions! And they're like, I'm just asking your water, sir. Right. Wait. It's, you're I haven't not even waiting. heard the specials yet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and also, there's times when know. you're not going to know what you want. Just like you wouldn't know at the restaurant. Like, maybe I don't know what I want yet. Saying right away, these are the things I don't want, you stop yourself from ever getting to try onions that maybe one day you are going to find the onion that you go, oh, my God, that's the best onion in my life. I am yeah. a fool. I have missed out on onions. So layered. Well, maybe you're more open-minded. Because I've seen you film with many different types. Mm -hmm. But – I know there's certain types that I will never get hard about. I don't care. I, I, I it just. I They're just deal breakers. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but which, but why do you have to write that instead of just? Because why waste their time of reaching out to me, having a conversation, realizing certain things? But you don't. Have, you like, don't have to reply to. Somebody. Are your pictures on there? Yeah, but. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what pictures are for. Exactly, and also you don't have to reply to messages. And also, there's the block button. So if you just, it's not something you like, you can just block them. This is I, not smoke signal signals and interpretive <laughs> dance. You're seeing photographs of yeah. people and like, yeah, okay, but most this of the photographs, it's like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, well, we've already finished another. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> another episode. That's how see much how there's easy to talk about. It is? And you can see we barely got through. What's, no, that's um, typical. Barely got through. Barely. Uh, barely. We didn't do it that much for for, for this one. Mm. We're trying to see how many bear puns we can fit into an Girl. episode. Girl. Girl. <laughs> Jack, uh, can you tell everybody where you want them to find you and follow you? Find me on Twitter at JackDyerX1. You can find me on Instagram at the.jackdyer. You can find me on Cybersocket at JackOn. Uh, please check that out because it's super fun and addictive and... Um, it's a little bit of a passion project for me, so I'm gonna there, check that one out. It's oh. really fun. I'm Dude, enjoying it's, it. It's really fun, and uh, and start at the beginning because yeah. it explains a lot. Start at the beginning because it does. I mention things like so. It really five, is like six a, it in. is like a Carrie Bradshaw yeah. like Sex and the City. I, I was coined this last week, Harry Carrie Bradshaw. I love that, <laughs> Harry Bradshaw. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. It's very interesting though because you do read about certain topics you've always wanted to know or thought you knew yeah. about, and you bring it from real life, uh, family thruple to filming. To mm -hmm. living in Palm Springs, being a daddy, or you know what have you, so it is very interesting. I just wrote one that's coming out in a couple of weeks. It's called uh, it's called um, Peanuts and Cracker Jack, mm -hmm. and it's all about your ball game. And it's the whole thing is on balls. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I didn't think I had so many opinions about balls, but I guess I did. It was enough to fill a blog. So yeah, and more. I could do more. <laughs> Those balls are a home run. They are. Oh. They're a real hit. <laughs> mm. Roll with it. Huh. <laughs> And tell everybody where you want them to find you and follow you, Mr. Teddy Bear. You can find me on Instagram at, at Mr. Teddy Bear Gur or on Twitter at the Triple X Teddy Bear. And at any bathroom stall. <laughs> Coming <laughs> near you. Coming near you. <laughs> or on you. Or in you. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm Alexander. You can uh, reach me on Instagram at Alexander is on air. Uh, and there we go. That's another episode. Bye. 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 <laughs> That has been another episode of Bear With Us, Girl, presented by Bear World Magazine and Cybersocket.com. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, comment, rate, all the love Very and support you can give, guys. Questions, comments, and suggestions? Girl. Email us at bearwithusgirl, three R's, at gmail.com. Until next time, embrace the fur. Girl.